Hi everyone, my name is Sheehan Fernando. I am the Vice President of Sales here at Modern Requirements. I wanna take a moment and thank everyone for joining today. We here at Modern Requirements believe in taking our client feedback and turning it into reality. Today is another example of us doing just that. Which brings me to our focus of today. We're gonna to be talking about version and variant management, which is one of our new capabilities, which we're rolling out in our upcoming release. We're going to take a look at uh, how to, how, we're going to walk through, walk you through how we're going to conceptually version variant management in, in software. We're also going to look at conceptually how we're going to manage hardware uh, versions and variant management. And then we're going to, I'm going to turn it over to Asif, who's going to walk you through uh, our tool and how we, how modern requirements version variant management can be done in using our simple user interface. Before we dive into the demonstration, I want to share a little bit about who we are as an organization. To truly understand who Modern Requirements is as an organization is to understand who we are in terms of our relationship with Microsoft. We have been a strategic and trusted partner of Microsoft since 2010. In fact, we are the only natively built requirements management tool for Azure DevOps. And that relationship extends beyond just a requirements management in Azure DevOps. Oh. Um, Back. beyond uh, our requirements management. And we are actually part of Microsoft's, uh, Microsoft's Copilot ecosystem, which they announced uh, just a few months back in the Microsoft Inspire uh, conference. By working closely with Microsoft, we are always in alignment, adapting and growing with them, which means our clients can take advantage of the scalability, security of Azure, as well as streamlined deployment and management as well. Infotech Software Reviews has ranked modern requirements as the number one uh, in their data quadrant report, as well as their emotion, emotional footprint report in 2023. And what does that really mean? Well, when you think of the data quadrant report, it really looks at features and functionality in requirements management. And we have been number one or number two over the last three years. What I really take pride in as Modern Requirements VP of Sales is that we rank as a champion in our emotion, in the emotional footprint report. That means we are paying close attention to our clients' asks. We are, we are providing some of the top-notch uh, client experience when it comes to software in the requirements management space. And today, and looking at version and variant management is a testament of us putting our clients' asks and needs first and developing software that makes sense to help, uh, help our clients be more productive. To talk a little bit about who we are and some of the tools that we, we offer today is to uh, look at Azure DevOps and what's offered it, what's available today. So if you take a look at the top here, these are some of the tools that are available within Azure DevOps. And Modern Requirements adds all the requirements management elements uh, above and beyond that. So a couple of elements that we are adding, or currently have added, is in authoring and reporting. Some of the biggest workhorses that our clients have found useful when having modern requirements enabled in their Azure DevOps instance is Smart Docs. Today, we're going to be looking into a deep dive into version and variant management. And some of the other areas, like project auditability, where we manage uh, reviews, trace analysis, baselining, impact assessment, are all key requirement management elements that we bring into Azure DevOps natively. Visualizations, so the ability to diagram, create uh, mockups of UIs and simulation are just a couple of other, the other elements that we add into Azure DevOps. And then efficiency optimizers, like our Copilot for DevOps, which is, as I mentioned, featured by Microsoft's Copilot ecosystem. And lastly, some of the other services that we provide within um, natively within Azure DevOps. We, in fact, recently polled our clients to better understand where they get the most value by using modern requirements. And you know, the feedback was amazing for us because A, we found that most of our clients are saving about 50% of time in their development and management requirements. By the way we have automation built into our tool, uh, our clients are able to develop trace matrices with just a few clicks, which has saved them up to 80% of effort in creating that. And then lastly, I'm gonna quickly highlight this last a little box here where by having meaningful optimize, meaningful uh, automation 
optimizing the process flow within your requirements management process, we found that our clients are, fi are, are cutting their development rework by almost 10 times. Variant management in requirements engineering is essential for handling diverse product versions efficiently. It ensures clear specification of variant specific requirements, maintains consistency, supports customization, and enables effective change and risk management. By reducing redundancy and ensuring compliance and promoting traceability, it accelerates time to market, optimizes resources, and enhances the overall product quality. Handling complexity, I just wanna talk about that for a moment. Products, especially in software and engineering domains, can have numerous configurations and options. Managing these variants ensures that requirements for each version are clearly defined, helping engineers and stakeholders understand and address the complexity. Another big element that we are known for by having a single source of truth, so having your requirements tooling built into your Azure DevOps, is traceability. And so traceability is critical for ensuring that each requirement is met and properly tested. So with version, with version and variant management, traceability is maintained for each version, aiding in quality assurance and compliance efforts. One of the other last elements I want to quickly ch chat about here before I uh, turn it over to Asif is how using version variant management can reduce errors. Variants that share common requirements can lead to errors if changes are not properly managed. So effective variant management minimizes that risk of introducing errors due to, mis due to miscommunication or misunderstandings. What you're going to find shortly when Asif does his detailed demonstration is that through a simple user interface, we are able to manage the complexity of variant management and the complexity involved in having different versions of those variants. I'll take a pause there. I want to share some of the key features that version and variant management offer and some of the benefits to you as a user and as the poll suggests, 90% of you folks are looking for this capability. So I'll take a moment and let you consume this. Just a few highlights, creating variants and variant packages um, is, is a capability that many of our clients have said that they would like to have a better way of doing. And so this is what has brought us down to this point. And another thing I want to highlight here real quick is traceability. To establish traceability between requirements and project aspects, ultimately the benefit to you is to align requirements with other projects and elements. So with that being said, I'd actually like to turn it over to our chief technologist, Asif Sharif, who is going to talk a little bit about conceptually how to manage or how to think about version variant management, and then dive into our user interface uh, and show you how it's done in our tool. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Shan. And mm -hmm. hey, folks. Um, so, um, model requirements 2023 update one uh, is being released. Uh, our, our current ETA is end of next week. We will have a um, a RTM um, version ready, so which is it'll be ready for market. Um, and one of the big part of it is version variant management. We also are releasing um, Copilot for DevOps, uh, which we covered in our previous webinar. So if you haven't seen that, please uh, go to our website and take a look at the Copilot webinar. Uh, we are also releasing a few other things. So a very exciting release we're coming up with. Having said all of that, Let's take a look at uh, what does variant management mean. Now, variant and version management apply both to software and hardware engineering projects. In fact, when we built variant management, it was very much from a hardware perspective. Um, and then as we spoke to our various clients that do software, it was very evident that variant and version management have a very important role to be played in software as well. Now, as you, as you look at the screen, you will see that let's say you have a software, you're gonna do a release one. 
and then release two, release three, and so on and so forth. Now, release one, definition of what release one consists of from a requirements, test case, risk, hazard, FMEA um, perspective, whatever work items you're managing, is that not only will you have a final release, but there might be multiple interim versions uh, before you finalize what is in version one. And then you need to move to version two, where ver version one is locked down, um, and then move to version three and version four. But imagine you've moved to version four, but now there's a path for, ver uh, for version three. How do you manage that? And a patch on that. And what if you want to propagate any changes that I do here back to release four and so on and so forth, right? So how do you manage this? Now today, managing this in Azure DevOps is extremely hard. Um, with version invariant management, uh, this will become much simpler, much, much simpler. Now, take a look at uh, another view from a hardware perspective. Consider you have a device. You have some system, um, and that device, you have a base definition, and now you create two variants from this base definition. And these both can sort of work independently, but they're all predicated on this, and there are common elements in these, and they'll have their versions, and you'll create a new variant for 2021, and a variant for 22, and a variant for 23. That means they all can have shared elements, but they can also have distinct versions of the same work item, the same requirement, or distinct work items. And at some point in time with device B, uh, we might actually create a variant for device C and maintain its life cycle. So a similar design pattern, but, uh, but the software and the hardware world will solve this problem using similar technologies but to different ends because one is managing software release versions or you're using it for COTS package implementation which varies from client to client uh, or you're going to do it for hardware uh, engineering projects. So let me now present to you the application. All right, so you should be looking at uh, the new update one UI of, um, of modern requirements, uh, 2023 update one. Uh, one of the changes we have done across modern requirements is all of our browse pages, where you can see the folder structure and the and, and the artifacts in it um, now have a full screen view, just like the query view does. So this is um, Microsoft evolved from a different design to this design. We are, we are, we, we are also now implementing the same. Um, of course, this view is much more powerful because you can search on it and you can see more data and, and so on. Um, now, when you create a package, so let's let's create a package from scratch, and I'll show you what other things are. By the way, a package can be used for things like uh, uh, requirements. Uh, you can use it to define your business case. You can do it for your design specs, your for test protocol, and so on and so forth. So packages can be used for many things, and they can be organized within folders. Now. Let's create a brand new package. And as we create this package, I will call this test webinar package. Okay. And what we'll do is we will insert one work item, which work item? 2813. Okay. And we will we can take this work item and inject it into our, our package. Okay, now 
one of the things I should mention is there is a, there is a particular meta template that you can use to to define uh, what information goes into a package. And I'll talk about the meta template. So if you know uh, smart dogs, this is very similar in concept um, to the the template, the meta template that we have for smart dogs. It's a very similar construct. So I'm going to use this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this epic. Uh, by the way, I'm using a, an agile template, but you can use a compliance template. You can use a system development template or whatever template you so choose uh, or your own custom ones, of course. Um, and uh, it works the same way. So of course we had to pick one. Agile is very common nowadays. So we figured we'd use that to begin with. Um, when I'm inserting a work item, um, when I'm when creating a package, I can select top level work items. Uh, I can even change the version of the work item I want to add to the package. Okay. But let's go ahead and create the package. So what the system does is it actually created a test webinar, put the root work item in it, um, and pulled in all the information that was relevant for that package. Now, if you have used Smart Docs, the way Smart Doc works is that you curate exactly what you want in a Smart Doc. It doesn't pull in things automatically. It is very deliberate by design so that you can create a document exactly the way you want it. But a a version package will, in this case, has pulled in a bunch of information. Now you might ask what information did it pull in and why did it pull in that information? So let's go to column options and enable work item type. And you will see it pulled in the, the features of the Epic, the user stories, the test cases, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, why did it pull that information in? Then go to the template under info. It'll open up a new tab. And it'll show you what the template looks like. Um, and it is pulling in this data. It's pulling in the epics. Um, for the given epic, it'll pull in the features, their stories, and the test cases. Okay. And to the extent that you define link types here, it will only pull in work items with that particular link type. Okay. So, um, so a package will automatically pull things in, which means that let's say that uh, you can create new work items directly from here. And so I could say test case one, so I can just add a new work item from here and, and it'll show up within the document it did here. However, if you, created a test case against this uh, user story from the work item window or the backlog or wherever, uh, it would still show up here because the whole logic of BPM is going to pull in all the appropriate data that you need to pull in. Okay. So, so that's one thing about package. Uh, management when you create one. By the way, the, the one, one thing we did was if you go to, for example, sales forecasting, because I'm working on a CRM app, um, if you remember looking at Copilot um, in my previous webinar, um, you will see that uh, the Copilot is not only available in version package management, uh, but also it's available in smart dogs and the backlog view, as well as within from within a single work item. So Copilot is available in a bunch of places, um, including uh, version package management. Uh, by the way, you create your version package and variants through this version package menu um, under boards. Let's take a look at a 
CRM package I created before, and you will see there's a little icon there. That means this package is locked. And what locked means is I cannot add um, new work items to it. You'll see none of the plus signs show up anymore because this particular package is locked. And if you have the permission, you can unlock it. Okay. So what does locked mean? That means this has become a baseline. It is locked down. However, what you can do is you could unlock it and make changes to things as in the example where we were looking at how to um, create an update one uh, release. Um, and so if you ever want to do that, you would unlock it and then do the needful. Now, the other thing you would see under, under this locked package is that the work item IDs are also locked. Okay. So work item IDs being locked means that in this particular um, in this particular package, this user story uh, is on version six. It's on revision six. Okay. Um, and one of the things you can do, uh, obviously, you can always open up the document view and look at the details of it, just like in Smart Docs. Uh, I'm going to just disable or hide the the type column. Um, so you can go the document view or the outline view. Um, you can also go to smart view. And what smart view allows you to do is to look at any work item at any version level. Okay. So you can see how things have changed or various versions. And uh, so in version one, it was blank. Version six is how it is right now. But you can also compare it. You can compare it to say version four, and it'll give you a red line view of what actually changed from version six to version four. So those of you who know about uh, smart dogs, you will see there's a compare view. Uh, and we also have a compare pop-up. But the compare pop-up uh, was comparatively rudimentary. This one is looks very much like a work item window, and it'll show you uh, links that have changed or or been added, the content that's changed, attachments that has changed, and you're you're looking at the delta. So the smart view is again not only available in the version package management, but also in everywhere else within the tool, within ADO. So this is going to be available broadly to be able to compare things uh, in, 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 a, in a good way. Now, what I also did was, if you go to variant, no, no, actually, before I do that, um, you can also create versions. So before I locked it, I had created different versions of the version package. So this package had created many versions. And so you can open up previous versions and see how things look like previously and even compare it and see the red line view of what changed, both in the outline view or in the document view. And you can compare it to any other version. So any two versions of a, of a, of a version variant package can be compared. So similar concept to Smart Docs. So we've brought in some of the best practices from Smart Docs, but of course, the intent of this is 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 is, is different, um, but there are similarities, which would make adopting it easier, I believe. Um, so so you got versioning, and at some point in time, you might want to say, "I'm going to create a new variant of it." And when you create a new variant of it, the variant looks the same as the original package to begin with. However, all the work items are live now. That means if I make a change in here, 
the change is only happening in this package. It's not going to happen across the board. Okay. And uh, what, what now we can do is, so, so let's say I go and I look at this particular work, work item. And let's say I want to open up the work item in the standard window. And then make a change there. And although you can make a change directly here as well, right? Um, or you can make it in, in the pop-up. Um, you will see that I've changed this here. And this is live. This is 2821. But in the original one, this hasn't changed. Because this is logged down to version 3. This is pointing to the live version. So any changes you make would be evident in this package. And at any time you choose, you can set version of this particular work item. Okay. And in the event that you want to not only set the version of this work item, but you actually want to lock a whole hierarchy below it, then you'll choose this option or you'll choose one of these options, either for life or a given version. So this allows you to per <coughs> this allows you to perfectly perfectly curate what goes or what is in a given version of the software or a variant of hardware. You see that there, there, there is another really interesting thing people like to do is so you you see this is an email integration requirement um but what we can do is we have variants i've created a variant uh this particular variant is it's a variant of email integration it's called message integration okay so i'm going to just switch this one with this one in this location so i'll do a switch and it will actually replace uh, the content directly in here. And you will note that the message integration had two other requirements underneath it, which got pulled in along with the message integration. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a component and you're swapping that component with a variant component of it. So if this was, uh, an automatic if you were building a car you could replace a four cylinder vehicle with a six cylinder engine and that switch from four to six cylinder engine um, would would then bring in all the appropriate parts with it and 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 that's called switch variant or we can create a brand new variant right and uh, so we can create a brand new variant and this is message integration um and let's just call this let's call this two or abc okay so i'm, I'm changing i'm creating a brand new variant of this and uh, i will replace it with it and what it will do is it so you'll see the id change here but everything else around it remained the same so this work item is linked to these guys but um it is a different work item it's a different variant of the previous work item that we had injected so this this ability to create variants at the package level and at the work item level are two very important concepts in variant management now in many cases if you're doing software you may not want to do this very often because all you're doing is defining a a this is for software, this becomes an intelligent uh, baselining tool, a sophisticated baselining tool. Uh, or in, in software, this becomes, uh, uh, if you're implementing SAP uh, or Dynamics or whatever system, you can then use it for uh, configuring your tools for different clients, and so i.e. creating different variants of the implementation for different clients. But in hardware, you often need the ability to swap components 
from a from sort of a catalog of components and then reuse it. The oh yeah, the other thing you have is packages and sub packages. So of course you can create a big package. And by the time, even in this project, if I'm looking at uh, this particular project for CRM, you could end up with 10,000 work items in there easily. But the question is, do you want packages that are that large? And perhaps not. Perhaps what you want to do, and, and, and if you're building a tractor or if you're building um, a, a medical device, then you probably don't want to create a package that is uh, 100,000, 200,000 work items. So what you do is you create a high level package and then you create sub packages. So for document management, uh, which is here, I actually created a sub package. And the sub package has the details of what is in in document management so you can take a big system break it up into subsystems and they all become its 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 uh, sub packages in fact if you go to the sub package you can see it's actually part of uh, this package and part of this package also are linked packages so what i did was there was a business case for the system I did an uplink with that package and a downlink with my test protocol and, and my uh, design spec. Um, now, there's a few other things that you can do. So one, one of the things you can do that we did with uh, version invariant management is we created, um, we, we also support review management. So just like you can do reviews in, um, in, in smart docs, you can review um, version invariant packages in, uh, you can do review of variant and, and version packages. Okay. So the same concept, this, it works the same way, uh, but you can initiate and, and, and review those things from here. That's one. The other thing you can do is you can generate um, reports. So you can create your, of course, your reporting template and then extract the data. Um, and this data will be based on whatever work item and revisions that exist in that package. So you can create uh, your your templates and then use the templates to to extract the data in reports and save it to Word or PDF. If you want, um, if you want to simply save the document as is in Word or PDF, go from here. This is sort of a quick way of doing it. Uh, but of course, you can call Smart Report for more advanced configuration that you want for your reporting. The, the other thing you can do is you can create traceability matrices. And the scope of the trace matrix can be limited to a given package. And the, the way that's done is if you go to the editor tab, uh, so we have redesigned our UI again to be more consistent with Azure DevOps. Uh, periodically, we'll do a refresh of our UI. As Azure DevOps is evolving, we want to have a seamless experience for our users. So we continue to evolve our user experience um, design based on how Azure DevOps is evolving. And thank God they do a, a very good job of, of their experience. And so you'll find model requirements will continue to be in sync with it. Um, so what our new design is the link, um, the trace matrix type is a dropdown. So if I choose horizontal matrix, uh, I can choose query, but under query, I have two choices. I can either choose a shared query or I can limit it 
based on uh, my version package. Okay. And when you do limit it, then you can define all your levels. Uh, and of course, this trace matrix is the same as you have used before, and that's it. And, and then, then you can render this, this report. The data that's coming here, the version of the work items it's showing you here are all uh, based on what is in the version package system. Okay. So in this example, I'm showing epic to features, to stories, to test cases. Um, so just a, a couple of um, the, the one, one other thing that uh, we, we have done, you should note, if you're a current user of model requirements, uh, and it does seem like most of you on the call are, um, the, the, the navigation uh, to different um, right panel uh, area, is through this 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 icon now and so you can go to insert work item and then drag and drop the work items or you can navigate from here or you can simply use this um, for navigation so that's one navigation uh, we have optimized the the toolbar um, and uh, and also the dot 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 has the appropriate options available um, and uh, and, and these menus are grouped together into the logical places. The, the last thing that I want to mention here is that if I wanted to drill down on mobile CRM uh, and have this be a separate sub package, I can go here and sorry, link, and create a new linked package, okay? Uh, or create a new sub package. In this case, I'd probably want to create a new sub package. And so now I can go ahead and uh, give this a name and maybe I'll just call it uh, mobile CRM package and uh, we'll choose the appropriate template um, that we want, uh, wh whatever package you need to work with. And uh, go next, this particular work item will be added to the root. At the bottom, it'll pull in all the other things and we can manage mobile CRM in the sub package. We don't have to create this massive system once with half a million work items or, or 10,000 work items even, um, because over time it becomes more complicated to work with. So this idea of sub packages are extremely helpful. So, so that's, uh, that's essentially how uh, version and variant package management works. Uh, again, it's located under version package and uh, and it'll be, as I mentioned, uh, it's in the final rounds of UAT. And so it should be um, ready for release. Our expectation is by end of this month, and then it'll get rolled out to all the sandbox environments. So if you, if you um, in the sandbox, you can test it on the sandbox before it gets put into the production environments. Uh, also, if you if you use it on prem, uh, we'll upload this on our website uh, under the client area, and you guys can download it and either put it on your sandbox for testing, or you can deploy it in production. However, you your process uh, is defined. So so folks, um, uh, again, MR twenty twenty one update one is an exciting uh, functionality. In fact, when I was building this demo, uh, obviously creating all of this content would have been uh, time consuming and painful even uh, because there's lots of content. Uh, I use Copilot. I use my Copilot here to tell me uh, all the user stories I need for calendar management and it actually pulled in 
uh, all the create a new event, do blah, blah, blah. And then I just pulled all of those in. And if I needed to make modification, I did. If I didn't like any of them, I unselected it. Uh, otherwise, it was a great way to start a project or, or add to it. And, uh, and, and, and then all I did was say, you know what? Add these work items to my package. And it all got injected into my package. Um, and so, so, of course, Copilot is coming out. Uh, it's part of our Enterprise Enterprise Plus editions. Um, and uh, in, in addition to that, of course, you have your analysis function, which you can use to, to analyze the, your, your requirements, your test cases, your FMEAs, your risks, your hazards, uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, and, and, and just as I open it up for Q&A, by the way, if you have questions, put your questions in the, in the question panel uh, and, and we'll, we'll address them uh, right after uh, this thing here. Um, but one of the things we're doing is both with version and variant package management as well as um, Copilot, we're working on Copilot with Microsoft for the next couple of iteration of it. Um, so, so you'll, you'll see a lot of innovation happen in this space and we are working closely with a few of our key clients right now, but as you get your hands on Copilot, please let us know your feedback. Uh, similarly, uh, let us know your feedback on, um, on version package management. There's a whole bunch of, uh, we've got a big, um, backlog of things that we intend to implement. Because of course, when our we've, we've, we've done some early access with some clients and they provided great feedback, um, and uh, we'll continue to iterate really based on how you need it to evolve. So with that, um, guys, I'm going to open it up, open it up for Q and A, uh, and Shian. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Asif. And we do have several questions uh, in the chat, so I'm going to read them out to you. So the first one we have was can multiple variants containing the same work items be live at the same time? If so, do work items in different variants have different IDs? Yeah, that's a good one. So the so the, the first part is different variants can have the same work items with different revision number to them. Um, however, it is the same work item. So the ID is the same, but there are different revisions in different um, in different packages. Uh, however, if you do want to modify it, then what you end up doing is you end up, uh, of course, this package is locked, so the options are not enabled. Maybe I can go to this one. Um, what you can do is you can actually create a variant, replace it, and then modify it. And this way, you're just modifying a variant of that version of the work item and not the same work item that is shared by everyone else. However, if you did want to ever uh, create a variant and, and change it, um, or if you just want to change a work item that would affect all the packages and they all refer to the live one, make a change to it, it will automatically propagate. So the answer is yes, you can have different versions of the same work item across multiple uh, variants. Excellent, thank you. Next up, would you use a would a use case for switching live stories be if a rollback is made in the production environment and the live version package needs to be updated? Sorry, could you say that again, Shan? Yes. Sorry. The question was, um, bear with me. The question was, um, sorry. Oh, I, I, I see it, Shan. There would you go. For switching live stories be if a rollback is made in production environment and the live version package needs to be updated. Um, so, so yeah, so, so if you did change, uh, so for example, 
So let's go to this work item. And uh, what we do is we, we can set the version of this to be um, version one. So I just set this to version one, people make changes, they do rollbacks, whatever. Um, at some point, I said, no, 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 this is not right. And I need to, I need to go back to uh, another version. So then you just go to set version and you can switch to any other version. By the way, even if you do, even if you do a rollback, okay? So even if you do a rollback, what you will find is that the a new version is created. So versions are not destroyed when you create, do a rollback. This is how you do a rollback. So I could go back to a different version of the work item and I can do a rollback. It'll just create revision four of it. So you can always go back uh, to a previous version before, which was pre-rollback. Okay. Next question, Asif, uh, is how can different versions of a work item be merged? How can a different... How can uh, different versions of a work item be merged? Is it possible? So, can you merge different versions of a work item? So one of the things we do have is what we call propagation rules. Now, what a propagation rule, what a propagation rule is, is it says if you add a work item to a package, the variant that was created from it would also end up having that. If you remove it from one, it'll remove it from the other. And if a work item is set to lock or live or using version, then that would be propagated as well. Now, sometimes the, the, there are some use cases where you want changes uh, to be propagated from one package to the other. Um, you have an option to do just that. But specifically, in terms of merging uh, different, you can roll back, but you can't, you can't merge it as yet. One of the things that we are working on is you can take two completely distinct packages, not only versioning, because in the compare, you can always compare different versions of a work item, but you can take two distinct packages, compare it, and then be able to merge the two packages manually. There's a to a point and click approach. It will show you the delta. You can even open up the work item in the two packages, whether it be two variants uh, of the work item or two versions of the work item, and then merge them um, based on, on different UI options. That feature apparently did not get completed for this release, but I suspect it will be coming in um, um, the next version of VPM that will release. Okay, thank you, Asif. The next one is, um, how are the versions and variants connected to the backlog and repository? Do I get to, do I get an do I get an own backlog for each variant, or do I need a new repository for each variant? Again, how are the versions and variants connected to a backlog and repository? Let's start there. Yeah. So, so a version, um, if if a version, um, so for example, if you look at this this version. So this particular work item is revision six of the work item that uh, is in say release five of our product. So if, if re revision six is in release five, um, this item would have been worked on in the backlog. Of course, this is a requirement work item. It would have been worked on that work item at some point in time. 
if in the event that you actually need a distinct work item for this, then you'll go and uh, you'll do a create uh, create variant in replace to create a distinct work item of this. Uh, of course, it cannot be locked if you want to do that. Um, and it will create a new work item and then that particular work item which belongs to this package will be in the backlog separate from um, 2831, uh, which is referring to revision six. Um, because a given work item in the backlog can only appear once. Uh, backlog does not support revision number uh, as a different separate instance. So you can create a, vary, a work item variant in replace, and then that'll show up as a separate work item. Brilliant. Thank you. How do I baseline a variant? Um, to, well, there's two ways to do it. One is you version it. So you create a new version. That's your baseline. You open up the version at any time you want. Uh, you'll see what it looked like at that point in time. That's probably the best way to do um, baselining of variants because it just takes a snapshot of it. Uh, of the entire package at that point in time. Um, the, of course, the other way to do it is you can lock it. You can lock it, and of course, that's now locked down. It cannot be changed unless you unlock it. Um, and that is another way to create a, um, a baseline. The third thing is to use variants cleverly, where you can go ahead and you can create a new, new package of this. And, but this time what we'll do is we'll just call it baseline. Um, we'll just call it baseline and we'll create a, a variant of it. And as soon as we create a variant of it, we'll lock it. And that too uh, would act like, um, would act like um, um, a baseline. So now go ahead, let's lock it. And so, so th 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 those are a couple, three ways of doing it. Okay. A couple more questions here. Uh, how does a package look like after you have added it to the package view? How, sorry, how does a sub package look like after you've added it to a package view? So what happens is, So in this case, um, there's a sub package here, document management. You have two choices. In, the, in this particular template, um, this document package actually has, as work items that actually show up underneath it, but I don't manage it in this package. I'm actually managing this thing under here. So I will create, all the top levels, level subsystems as sub packages. But my master package is enabled to show everything. So it will show the details of all my sub packages. However, there might be cases, and I, I, I suspect more often than not, where you don't want to see all the details in the master package. You just want to have a reference to the subsystem. And then to look at the details of the subsystem, you basically drill down and look at the sub package. But you can do it e either ways. Uh, it, it's a design decision you will make as to how should packages be managed. Okay. I have another question here, Asif. This is uh, Jason says this is amazing. How does this work for implementation of dynamics? Um, so if you're implementing Microsoft Dynamics or, or any system um, that you have a base system and you implement that across multiple um, of your clients, uh, what you would do is you would create a base, um, you will create a baseline of your system implementation of your features and whatever else you need that people choose from. So you'll cre create what, what, I, what I'll call a, a baseline uh, of your product implementation. 
Once you have created that, you might even go and you might say that certain components are the choices to be made, whether I want messaging at large or do I want, uh, uh, do, do I want uh, let's say, some other type of messaging? This was the original version of it. Uh, or I do, do I want uh, uh, email messaging? So you can create variants of it and have it pre prepared. And I would then lock this. Then this becomes your baseline definition of the your system. Then anytime you have a client implementation, you would go to variant, you would create a variant of it, and then you would build out what that particular client wants. That's interesting. We have a couple more questions here. Uh, next up, can I run reuse queries on variants? Can I navigate packages like the non-packaged project? One more time, can I run slash reuse queries on variants? Can I navigate packages like the non-packaged projects? So you cannot run classical Azure DevOps queries on versions of work item. That's simply an Azure DevOps design. Uh, the queries are run on individual um, work items, not on their versions. Uh, so to look at the, uh, the version and variant information, you will come to version or variant area to, to look at the details for it. The, the only difference being, unless you, you do, unless you end up creating, uh, uh, create and replace kind of function, which clones it essentially, uh, then you can you'll have the ability to um, you'll have the ability to query it because now it'll be a different work item ID assigned to it. It's a different instance of the work item. Um, yeah. Okay. And this will be the last question because we're coming at the top of the hour. If there's others, please actually continue. We can continue past. Uh, the next question asked of is. Where can you manage the permission for unlocking a package? Is the permission managed on the project or the organizational organization level? No, it, it is managed at the project level. Um, so you can define, uh, well, apparently I don't have permission in this project myself, uh, but it is under the project permission level. And if you have, this is a good demo of, not everybody can change the permissions, but if you do have an admin right uh, to the project, then you can go ahead and assign people various rights, whether it's lock and lock or um, create meta template and so on and so forth. There's eight or 10 different rights you could assign uh, for version and variant management. But it is at a project level because projects tend to be different and you want to have a granular control as to which groups can do what for a given project. Thank you. And uh, that actually wraps up the number of questions that we have in front of us right now. Uh, so with that said, Asif, I think, unless anyone has any other additional questions they'd like to add now before we wrapped our Q&A session. I'll give everyone just a moment. Okay. So you know what, um, in, in closing, mm -hmm. I would like to thank all of our customers, uh, all of Modern Requirements users who have been providing us with really good feedback so we can continue to make Modern Requirements even more awesome. Uh, we appreciate your, your support and your interest in, in making sure that Modern Requirements continues to evolve in a way that makes your life more exciting, makes it simple. And uh, uh, again, this product will sh should be finalized by late next week and you should get your hands on it. Please give us your feedback, um, how we can serve you better. And I wish you all a wonderful day and stay safe folks. Bye-bye. Thank you, Asif. 
So in closing, I too want to thank you on behalf of the Modern Requirements team uh, that for joining us today and spending the last hour with us. The recording will be shared at the end of this webinar, uh, so stay tuned for that. We do have a quick survey at the end of this webinar, so please take a few moments and complete it. We'd love to get your feedback. Along with participating today, you are eligible for a free 30-day trial. Um, so there's a link. Uh, the link is going to be posted in the chat as well. Please feel free to reach out to me directly if you have questions or you want to get a dem another you know, tailored demonstration for you and your organization. And lastly, uh, I want to say again, thank you, heartfelt thank you to our existing clients and folks who are inquisitive about variant, variant and uh, version management. And that concludes our webinar for today. Thank you, folks.